Back on the OUNsider.com podcast, I'm joined by the lead recruiting team writer and recruiting analyst that is the one, Brandon Drum. Brandon, how you doing? What's going on, man? Um, yeah, it's been a long, long journey. Um, lots of travel. Um, more travel coming up on OU Insider uh, as I will be down in Texas here in the next few weeks. Uh, then I will be down in Florida, Georgia, California, and then the D.C. area uh, to wrap things up as we do the recruiting tour as we started doing, I guess, a year and a half ago or so uh, on OU Insider. And now it has become a focal point on during the spring where I spend at least 10 days in Florida and really in Georgia and really Brian and I hit up all everything we can. And then I go out on my own, usually meet up with Colin in Dallas and Houston. And then uh, I'll do my own thing in DC and California. So it'll be fun. Um, but there's a lot coming and uh, there's a lot to talk about, obviously. Yeah. Let's start with uh 2022 <clears throat> linebacker commit Kobe McKenzie who flashes on tape. He's listed as the number one outside linebacker in the class and number four in the, in the entire what, – what puts Oklahoma at number four in the national recruiting rankings. But also, he moved from outside linebacker to inside linebacker as mm-hmm. a sophomore and flashes on tape. Particularly, there was one play that I loved in his huddle film where he tracked down Jace McClellan, scraped <laughs> and fit and – Every other fan loves it. <laughs> right. Right. So – that that's huge getting a 2022 defensive yeah. recruit in January. Yeah, so um he was a guy that you kind of felt was close for the past couple of months. Uh he's made random visits to Oklahoma. Uh he won't be at the junior day uh this coming weekend. Um there is a well I wouldn't even call it junior. Day. There's a get together this coming weekend with uh, several of the elite talents showing up on campus, and we'll obviously have a whole bunch of that on OU Insider uh, starting tomorrow. But, um, yeah, there is a uh, a lot of recruiting going on, and he is he's a huge pickup as far as that goes because he is what – he is Kenneth Murray after Kenneth Murray kind of figured out the position. You know what I mean? He already knows how to play the position because he's been doing it his whole life. Kenneth Murray had not. Well, he hadn't been playing the whole the position his whole life. He moved from outside linebacker. Right, but I mean, but he's been he playing is, linebacker. Yeah, yeah I, I wrote about this on, on Insider, saying that he is where Murray was as a freshman. Oh, okay. I didn't see that. Okay, yeah, cool. That's, nice. That, see, that's there you go. Great minds think alike. On our website. <laughs> very cool. Um, yeah, so that and he, he body type, very similar. I mean, he... He is going to remind a lot of people, as you wrote on OU Insider, of Kenneth Murray. I mean, he is. Uh, everything about him seems exactly like him. He's very. He's also a very open kid. He's a very talkative kid. He's a very personable kid. Um, but as far as his talents goes, he's got the speed, the range. He can go sideline to sideline really fast. Um, and the instincts. The instincts is one thing that, I mean, it can be taught to an extent, but you got to have the innate instinct, and that is something that he has that makes him special. Uh, that's why he can fill the gap and, and close in on Jace better than everybody else can. Um, and he can do the things as a sophomore that people as a senior in high school can't do and why he's ranked so high. I mean, he's a potential five-star. That's what people need to realize. He is a potential five-star. He is a five-star on the website. Like, oh, he already is? He's already listed as a five-star. I saw his four-star on a uh, – was it a composite four-star or is he – it's composite. Composite five star. Okay, two four seven has him four star. That's why I put him four star when right. I tweet out. Okay, yeah. So he's a composite five star. But I mean, I'm talking two four seven. He could be. I think he will be a five star on two four seven eventually. Uh, not just rivals and uh, ESPN as well, which adds in our composite. Um, but I, yeah, I, I agree. I think he is a five star. I think he's a top twenty twenty five player in the country. Maybe even higher than that when he, when it's all said and done. I think the opening. And the Under Armour camps are going to be really interesting to see where he, how he performs. Because if he performs well at those, mm, he's going to shoot up that really fast. So on the other hand, we have had lots of offers go out. Uh, I mean, it felt like everybody was getting an offer last Thursday yeah. and Friday. Who among those offers do you keep an eye on? Uh, really, the Caleb Williams. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to be honest, that is one of the. I, 
He said, okay, so depending on who you talk to, right? Okay, so if you're talking to sources around Norman, he's had an offer for a long time. If you're talking to Caleb, he has not. Well, I've kind of come to the conclusion that he didn't put the offer out and didn't say he had an offer because of the Vandergriff situation. And he kind of opened up to that when we were down in Orlando. And he said, look, and even in San Antonio, I, 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 I actually was on. I'm going to jump so, in here and, and say that I talked with him in June and it's on the channel. And he told me he had an offer, but he also understood that Brock Vandergriff was going to camp. So like, yeah. I, and it's also one of these situations where Caleb does not like to talk. He just yeah, he, he just does not like to talk. Yeah, he he yeah he's 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 really close to the best. His dad Carl is more of the guy that you want to talk to about things. Uh, he's more open. Um, and in speaking to them, uh, you kind of got the sense that Oklahoma that move, uh, Vandergrift decommitting was huge for them, uh, and. I'll put it to you like this. When I talked to Carl in San Antonio, I met his dad because they were on the same flight as me from Orlando to San Antonio as well. And I was just talking to him. I said, so do you plan on visiting Oklahoma? I mean, would, would they be an official? And I knew the answer because I'd already talked to Caleb. But it was more the reaction of the father that kind of I stepped back and I was like, okay, well, this makes more sense now. Because uh, Caleb had once said that OU was his dream school. When I asked his dad about the visit, he said, oh, of course. I mean, you could say that we're going to visit there maybe a couple of times. And I, I, I didn't delve into it any more than that um, because I knew they talked about the spring game being an official, potential official visit. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked because they're, they've are they got the money because dad, dad owns a, a big gym and is a big corporate guy in D.C. area. Uh, to make the travels. I mean, he was taking visits to OU when they when Vandergriff was committed for the Texas Tech game. And when I talked to uh, Caleb off camera, I asked him, I was like, why did you do that? He goes, because I knew eventually something might pop and OU was a place I really, really liked. And that's all I said. And you can read between the lines on that. Joe Brady gone. The issues going on at Penn State with the uh, Franklin situation. Oklahoma looks like a pretty good spot for Caleb Williams right now. I'll say that he was texting with Joe Burrow and spent a four-day trip in LSU for his last significant visit, but obviously yep, Joe did. Brady moving on. And yep. the idea that you won't have Joe Burrow around to tutor you goes into it. But also there's so much that goes on with this kiddo because he's not just wanted by Penn State and LSU and Oklahoma. George is also in there too. Uh, and so I, You can probably – well, uh, but yeah. but it's, it's worth talking about, so we're talking about it. Yeah. I'm not prepared to say that what he's planning to do, except <laughs> that he wants to commit before his senior season begins, which yes. makes a lot of sense. And the two visits could be broken between spring and summer, or they could be in February and the spring. It all depends, but I get the sense that he's going to wait to see what LSU looks like and where he fits, and how good or bad they feel about Miles Brennan, how good or bad mm -hmm. they, they feel about a grad transfer perhaps coming in there. And also, just what do you feel about the situation at quarterback for Oklahoma? Because Rattler seems like the guy. We would expect him to be the guy in 2021. Yeah, Chandler Morris is there, provided Tanner Mordecai is still there. That's a full quarterback room, as opposed mm -hmm. to perhaps walking into a place like LSU and being the day one starter. Yeah, um, I guess so. They, the, I, I'm told by everybody that they think Miles Brennan is really, really, really good. Uh, when we were down in Atlanta, that's all everybody wanted to talk about. They're like they're not going to fall off because they have Miles. They feel so good about him, and I, I, I wonder if that's a Joe Brady thing. Um, maybe Joe Brady had a lot to do with it, the development of Miles. Um, how the new guy they bring in, I think that's going to be one of the intriguing parts of this. If I was a betting man, I you would probably say LSU, OU are probably the teams that Caleb is most interested in right now. And that battle right there is interesting because of all the things you named and that and also because they're the two best offenses in college football. And that's a pretty good thing to have if you're a five star quarterback that have both those teams wanting you the way they do. 
um, Vandergriff situation is going to be intriguing because where Brock goes is going to set a lot of dominoes in place. Uh, and I, you know, you and I both fully expect him to go to Georgia or Auburn, uh, maybe Florida. But uh, if he goes to Georgia, you can expect LSU and Oklahoma to really, you know, if they're not already, really put the pedal to the metal on Caleb. So I want to take a break and I want to pick it up with the news of Ryan Jones in the transfer portal.